What's up YouTube? This is Michael Panetta with Tech Examined, and today I'm going to bring you just five of the useful features on the brand new iOS 8. There are many, many more, and if you feel like there's something that you want to see, please feel free to comment down below and hit that thumbs up button if you like this style of video. Now we got some features to take a look at, so let's jump into it. These top five features are in no particular order and they're ones that I just thought were interesting and wanted to show you. So let's start off with number five. All right, so we text a lot and we talk a lot. So why not combine the two? One of the first features they have updated is tap to talk. It allows you to just push the button, start talking. When you're done talking, you let it go. You can send it if you choose to or you, know, you can listen to it if you don't like it. But if you feel that it's exactly what you want to say, just hold it down. When you're done, you push up, and it sends. Now, the same feature goes for the camera. If you want to hold down and take a picture or even a video, same thing applies. If you want to take a picture, you're just going to slide up and snap a picture, and that'll instantly send it. So you better like what you take when you're <laughs> sending it. And the same thing goes for video. You can go ahead and push the button, and it will start recording. Now, you hold down the button to uh, continue to record, same thing. And if you're happy with what you like, you can go ahead and send it. I don't know why they don't have the same feature for the camera. You know, obviously being a beta, it's something you're just going to have to work out. I'll probably end up doing it. There's one more thing under details I wanted to show you. Uh, it gives you a little bit more information about your person that you're talking to. You can call them, FaceTime, you can go into their contact. Uh, you can send your current location. You can stop sharing your location. You've got Do Not Disturb. But the cool thing here is... All your picture attachments are in one spot, even the audio that I sent to them. So if you tap and hold it, you can copy it, delete it, and there is a more tab, and uh, that will allow you to pick whatever pictures you want and save them to your phone. You can trash them as well. Now, if you tap on it once, you'll go directly into that, and the forward information button unfortunately doesn't work here, but I'm guessing you're going to be able to email it, share it to Twitter, you know, all sorts of things that you do on the push up button but if you tap the list you can go in and do a list format and uh, if that's something that you think you might want to do it might be a little more simple to go through depending on how many pictures you have and uh, you see here I, I do have a little bit of a figuring out to do on what I'm doing here and realizing that you have to tap on it to bring it back up but uh, you know it, it's pretty decent having them all in one spot and uh, I do enjoy that so moving on to number four which is the camera features many many to go over we're going to start off and show you guys the first one. Now, the layout is pretty much the same, so you're not going to have to worry about finding any more functions or any more you know, weird things. But the first thing is the timer. You can see it right there on the left-hand side. Once you tap on it, nonchalantly, you have off 3 seconds and 10 seconds. Now, once you set that, you see it does go yellow on the left side in a little 3S. And once you tap it, you get ready to go and you run in. You get your picture, and it'll shoot 11 pictures. Now, it does take them kind of fast, so I'm not sure what variance you're going to get between the 11 pictures, because it is darn near the same. So maybe they can space it out a little bit, and, you know, if you have a blink uh, or someone's not looking or something like that, they might be able to adjust it a little bit. But I do think it takes it a little fast to start off, so maybe they'll fix that down the road. Next up is time lapse. Again, something I don't know if we're going to be using every day, but you take video, it'll speed it up, and you can get an extended period of time if you're working on something or taking pictures of a landscape, you know, and you want to get a variance of it, or maybe a sunset. But again, something I'm not sure you're going to be using a whole lot of. I could see you using the timer uh, before I would use the time lapse. Next up is editing options. Now, they've added a ton of features to this, and it gives you the ability to actually go in and really, you know, change your, your picture that you're doing. Now, it's right here on the right-hand side. You've got light and color, but if you tap on those, you get an extended menu here, of different options to really mess with the picture that you're working on and really make it your own or make it the way that you really wanted to if it's a little overexposed or underexposed you've got a ton of options on here to be able to do that you got any shadows you can get rid of those or if you really want to show a shadow you can do that now there are so many things to do with this and so much you could do with it it'd be so much fun I know it's something that I'm going to be using and I'm excited to see uh, how I can make my pictures look a little bit better. Next up is number three, and this is notifications with more interactive abilities. 
Now, what does that mean? Well, if you're moving around in your phone, you're in an application, somebody texts you, you normally had to tap on it to go into it and do the text. Now you would simply swipe down and you can go ahead and reply to them. Now, of course, you have your predictive text here, and I corrected myself. And when you're done, you simply hit send, it goes away. And if you were in an application, you can continue to do what you were doing. The same thing applies to the lock screen, and I wanted to show it to you because it is a little bit different than it popping down from the top. Now, once you pull that up before, you would slide it to the left, and it would take you into the application you can reply. You see here it says slide to reply, and you have a couple different options if you want to mark it as read or you actually want to reply to the person. So if you do that, and the same thing will happen, it'll slide down from the top. Now, think of applications uh, that will be added for this for third parties if you want to do something like I saw at the keynote, eBay or an email. So it'll be real interesting to see what the developers do with this. I'm excited to see it, and it'll save some more time, which is pretty cool. Moving on to number two, which is for the email application. Now, I call this multitasking. Some people may call it something else, but I think it's the ability to be able to do more than one thing at a time and not have to, again, close what you're doing or save what you're doing, which is what you end up having to do if you're replying to somebody or even starting a new email. You put the email address in there and you're stuck with what you need to do. At this point, you simply slide down the bar and it will go ahead and minimize it down at the bottom. Now, the really cool thing with this is you can go in to do something else, but that is not where it stops. You can actually do more than one. As you see here, I go ahead and just do multiple ones. I open up a new message and do that. So if you've got a lot going on and you want to move around, you can go ahead and open up multiple. It'll look just like your Safari browser when you're doing it and give you a little preview of everything that you want to do while you're typing up a message. So I consider that multitasking, and I think that's really cool and a nice addition to the email application on the phone. Well, we've got number one, and this is part of the multitasking portion. Now, unfortunately, when you double-click on this, you can't have a kill-all. So unfortunately, they haven't added that yet. However, they did add your recent contacts of people that you've talked to up there. And if you swipe to the left, it'll actually bring up your favorites, which is something you set by going into each contact on there. But not only is it something that you can look at on your multitasking bar, but it lets you do a lot more. So when you tap on a name, it'll bring up any phone that they have uh, on file with you on your contacts. You can text or even FaceTime with the person. So I, I think this is a welcome addition. I do find myself going into my contacts to look for someone uh, you know that I may have talked to and or talked to a lot and you know go in there and do that. So I think this is nice, uh, a nice addition to make it a little bit faster. Is it horrible to go into your contacts or go into your phone to see your most recent calls to do that? No, it's it's fairly easy, but this makes it just a little bit easier to be able to do that. So I think it's a welcome addition, and I'm interested to see what else they do with it. So those are the five features I wanted to bring to you today. If there is anything else that you would like me to show that you saw or heard about, please feel free to hit me up in the comment section below, and please be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And as always, to get our next video, please subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. And I want to thank you all for joining me. Here is our previous video talking about WWDC a little bit more. Other than that, thank you so much again. You all have a great night, and I will talk to you later. See you!